freshwater habitats pose a great challenge for the animals living in them as they are more likely to change than the sea. The freshwater habitat can freeze, turn into raging torrents, lose all their oxygen or even dry up. Lack of salt is one more problem that the freshwater animals have to face. In sea, the sea water has about the same salt concentration as the fluid in animals bodies, while fresh water is less salty. When the salty fluid in animals body absorbs fresh water, it makes the body fluid of the animals too much watery. Small animals are always in danger of water flooding into their tissues, making them swell up and even burst. Because of these challenges, not all the sea animals have made the leap to living in lakes and rivers. While crabs have made freshwater their home, starfish or octopus still live in the sea. Animals of the living world have been divided into two major categories. One is the animals with backbones, known as the vertebrates. And the other is the animals without backbones. Those are called the invertebrates. Other than these two major categories, there are other types too that are unrelated. Invertebrates form a vital part of all water ecosystems. While sponges and crabs are found in the sea, anthropods are common in fresh water. These anthropods are invertebrates with jointed legs and include insects, spiders and water mites. Water mites are minute relatives of spiders. But the life in fresh water is full of uncertainties and these animals have to deal with it to survive and multiply. And for this, these creatures follow a trick they have the ability to produce eggs that resist drying and are also capable of sealing up their whole bodies in temporary but protective cocoons. In the event of the pond or the stream drying up, these small creatures survive using these tricks. They may even be carried far away to a new destination by wind or in the guts of a large animal. Due to this transportation, many freshwater animals have a continental or worldwide distribution. Respiration is a process through which animals release energy from food through their body and for this they require oxygen. But water contains less of oxygen as compared to the air. So obtaining oxygen from water is a major problem for these water creatures. Snails living in fresh water use gills to extract oxygen from the water. They can only survive in water that has high oxygen content. Other snails have lungs, so they can come up from their home in stagnant water to fulfill their need for air. In the large lakes, zooplankton forms an important part of freshwater ecosystem. These zooplanktons are tiny animals and animal-like microorganisms that float freely as part of the plankton. Water fleas, which are crustaceans and are not related to real fleas, along with a unique group of microscopic animals called rotifers, form common freshwater zooplanktons. Many of these zooplanktons eat plant-like planktons called the phytoplankton, while some are carnivores or meat-eaters and eat smaller zooplankton. These zooplanktons then become food of fish and other large animals. Insects play many different roles in freshwater ecosystem. 
There are more variety of insects in the world than all other animal species put together. Most of these insects live on land, but over millions of years of evolution, many of the insects have become specialists of freshwater. They have evolved many features that equip them for life in water. Some have snorkels for breathing through the surface, others carry air bubbles around them. Mayfly larvae that live in rushing streams often have flat bodies. This flat body helps them wriggle under the rocks and avoid the strong water current. Few of caddis fly larvae build themselves protective cases out of small stones or debris. Some even build underwater nets to catch prey. There are about 25,000 species of fish across the world. These varieties are as much as all the vertebrates like birds, mammals, reptiles and amphibians put together. In spite of occupying a small area as compared to vast ocean, of these 25,000 species of fish, 10,000 live in world's rivers and lakes. The probable reason behind this is that lakes and rivers are separated by land which in turn allows isolated population to evolve into new species. One example of this is hundreds of different species of fish found in the lakes of Africa. These fish belong to one single cichlid family and evolved in isolation after the formation of lakes. As much as the species of fish vary, their feeding habits are also varied. Some lake fish feed by straining tiny plankton through their gills. Because of their size, speed and sharp senses, Fish are top predators in the water, dominating other animals in rivers and lakes. The food of these fishes include invertebrates, other fishes or sometimes even water birds and mammals. The red-bellied piranha is most fearsome one living in Amazon. They hunt in groups and attack their victims with razor-sharp teeth. In contrast, there are also piranhas that survive on berries dropped by trees in the flooded Amazon forest. Some fish are plant eaters like the grass carp which eats underwater plants. In the United States of America, people deliberately release these grass carp in rivers in order to get rid of the water weeds. Rivers and lakes shelter some of the most ancient types of fish on the earth. Lampreys are the oldest of the lot. They don't have jaws and feed by attaching to fish and rasping at their flesh with sucker-like mouths. But most of the fish have jaws and belong to two main groups, namely bony fish and cartilaginous jawed fish. Bony fish have skeletons made of bones, while cartilaginous jawed fish like sharks and rays have skeletons made up of cartilage. Sharks live in oceans, but few can cope with the fresh water. Bull sharks are one of the few human-eating species that swim far up to major rivers, including the Mississippi. Majority of freshwater species are bony fish, Few scientists suspect that bony fish first evolved from cartilaginous fish in freshwater. Then they gradually invaded the ocean. This might be the reason why members of so many prehistoric fish families live in freshwater today. The evolution of freshwater fish has occurred in various ways, which reflects their diverse lifestyles. One of the species, called trout, live in the fast-flowing stream and needs to swim constantly. It usually prefers cold water which provides more oxygen. Other fishes living in streams use their mouths as suckers to anchor themselves against the current. There is one constant danger faced by the fish 
living in the fast flowing streams. The eggs laid down by them are likely to get carried away in the stream. But fish overcome this obstacle by making nests in gravel, laying sticky eggs, brooding eggs in the mouth or giving birth to swimming young. A fish called Splash Tetra even goes to an extreme to leap out of the water to lay eggs on overhanging leaves. In comparison to the sea, fresh water can be muddy with low visibility. But freshwater fish have a superb array of sensory organs that help them get around this. Like all fish, they have a vibration detecting system called a lateral line running down each side of the body. The lateral line can feel the ripples made by the other moving objects, giving a sense of touch at a distance. Most fish, like salmon, have a good sense of smell. It can detect the faint but distinctive scent of the river in which they were born. This allows them to migrate to the river even after they have spent years at sea to lay eggs. The migratory pattern is opposite in both the American eel as well as European eel. Their adult life is spent in rivers and lakes in America, Africa and Europe. But they return to the depths of Sargasso Sea to breed and die. The next generation of the young eels, known as elvers, then must find their long way back to freshwater. These elvers are only 5 to 10 centimeters in length but swim hundreds of miles to reach rivers where they feed and grow. Catfish have a poor vision and hunt mainly at night. But they make heavy use of chemical sensors on the barbels around their mouth. There are some catfish that can even taste with their tail. Freshwater habitats are also ideal breeding grounds for amphibians. Amphibians are animals like frogs and salamanders that live partly in water and partly on land. The larvae of most amphibians have gills and live underwater. As they grow into an adult, they have lungs and legs and can walk on land. But they need to keep their skin moist. Amphibians breathe through their damp skin and skins of many species contain poison glands which they use to ward off predators. Almost all amphibians are carnivores and eat other animals for food. Salamanders are amphibians with long bodies and tails. Though many live on land as adults, there are some species who have returned to completely live in water. North and Central America have an unusually large number of salamander species. The world's largest salamanders are the giant salamanders of rocky, fast-flowing Chinese and Japanese rivers. They can grow up to 5 feet long. These giants are active at night and can live permanently in water, surviving on rats and turtles for food. As for frogs, few of them live entirely in water as adults. But their tadpoles form an important part of freshwater food chain. They become food for insects like water beetles. Although reptiles like lizards and snakes are land living creatures, many of them have returned to freshwater and made it their home. There are few snakes and lizards that hunt in freshwater. The most typical freshwater reptiles are turtles and crocodiles. Freshwater turtles usually prefer weed filled ponds and slow moving rivers and eat both plant and animal food. The soft shell turtles are the most aquatic ones and have flat pancake shaped bodies. They are fast swimmers and can breathe underwater through their skin. As a result, 
they really come on to the land. World's largest freshwater turtle is the alligator snapping turtle of southern USA. It is a massive creature and attracts its prey by wiggling a worm-like projection on its tongue. In warmer regions, crocodiles, alligators, caimans and gharials are top predators of rivers and lakes. In contrast to amphibians, reptiles lay eggs that are protected by hard shells and can hatch on land. Reptiles living in water return to land to lay their eggs. A crocodile is considered to be a caring mother and guards her buried eggs. When they hatch, she digs them out and gently carries them in her mouth to the water's edge. The Gharial of Indian rivers is one of the unusual and endangered species. Its long, narrow snout is ideal for catching fish. It leaves the water only to bask and nest. Even birds take full advantage of the resources offered by the rivers and lakes. Ducks and other floating birds use rivers and lakes not only for food, but as a haven for saving themselves from land predators. Some ducks eat plant, while others are specialized fish hunters. A variety of species of mammals have also returned to the watery way of life. These aquatic and air-breathing freshwater mammals have descended from sea mammals like the river dolphins and the freshwater manatees of the Amazon. The five species of river dolphins have made the great river system of Asia and South America their home. These river dolphins have poor eyesight and hunt by bouncing sound waves of their prey. This technique is known as echolocation. Otter is another aquatic mammal that often comes onto the land in spite of having webbed feet and closable nostrils to help themselves underwater. These otters are playful mammals and are expert underwater hunters. The giant otter of the Amazon grows to a full length of six feet. In addition to these mammals, there are several fishing bats that grab their prey from above. Then there are hippopotamus of Africa that spend much of their lives in water climbing onto land only to graze, usually at night. Lake Baikal in eastern Russia is not only the deepest lake in the world but also the oldest. It might be as old as 25 million years or even more. These long years have given plenty of time to the lake for evolution and to produce unique species. Today, Many of its inhabitants live nowhere else in the world. The lake is covered in winter with ice and has deep currents that ensure that there is plenty of oxygen even at the lake bed which is 1.6 kilometers below the surface. It also boasts of the world's only freshwater seal called the Baikal Sea or Nerpa. The second deepest lake after Baikal is the Tanganyika Lake in Africa, having a depth of 1.5 kilometers. This deep lake has a relatively low human population living on its shores and is also the lowest point on the African continent. Lake Victoria is Africa's largest lake and the second biggest freshwater body in the world in terms of area after Lake Superior.
Lake Victoria lies between the two arms of East Africa's Great Rift Valley. Even though it was formed only 200,000 years ago, it supports hundreds of species of fish and the maximum number of species belong to the cichlid family. This family is found nowhere else and it remains a mystery as to how so many species evolved in such a short time. Today, the modern fishing techniques along with pollution due to sewage and fertilizers from farms have half of Lake Victoria's native fish species extinct. Rivers and lakes have been used by humans since long long time. In Eastern Asia, people continue to live on houseboats or stilt houses by the water's edge. Rivers have also been playing an important role in spiritual and religious beliefs of the people. Like river Ganges in India is considered to be holy by the Hindus and hundreds of thousands of pilgrims come to take part in annual bathing festivals. Humans have also been responsible for reshaping the nature by diverting and controlling the rivers for various reasons like irrigation, public water supplies, using water to provide energy and creating inland routes for ships. Building dams are one of the large river projects undertaken by humans. Large dams and reservoirs today interrupt many of the world's major river systems like the Volga in Russia and Indus in Pakistan. Rivers and lakes have to face one of the greatest challenges of survival through contamination by artificial substances such as sewage and chemicals from farms and industry. This is known as pollution and the sources of pollution can be many starting from factories to accidents and spillages. One road tanker spilling its load can damage years of work done in restoring a river to a healthy state. Acid rain is another major pollution problem caused by gases like sulfur dioxide. This gas is released when fossil fuels are burned and can travel thousands of kilometers on the wind and dissolve in rainwater. This makes the rainwater acidic. Acid rains have been responsible for thousands of rivers in Norway and Sweden for losing a great population of fish. These acid rains can dissolve aluminium present in soils which again is poisonous to many creatures. Even farming is a cause of pollution to freshwater habitats. Crops are often treated with fertilizers made in factories to help them grow. These fertilizers dissolve in rain and flow into nearby rivers, lakes and ponds making the water turn murky green. The oxygen level in this water falls, causing the fish and other animals to suffocate. This process is called eutrophication. Various steps are being taken to control the problem of pollution. One natural method is to let the water pass through a marshy wetland first. The growing wetland plants take up some of the nutrients and bacteria and turn some of the nitrates into harmless nitrogen gas. But the future of rivers, lakes and ponds is of great concern. Humans use these freshwater sources to dump pollutants and at the same time take water from these resources for personal use as well as in various industries. Under these circumstances, can the wildlife in the water survive? Over and above this, what effect will it have on human life? In the coming century, 
the human population worldwide is in great danger of running out of fresh water. This should be a great enough reason for us humans to take care of our lakes and rivers. The time has come to decide between economic growth and the very survival of the human race along with our planet Earth. Modernization across the globe has brought people from villages to city. The urban lifestyle has made people use much more water than used by the villagers. Many international rivers flow through different countries and its resources are being claimed by all the countries which might lead to disputes in the coming years and these disputes can take the shape of a wall. If the upstream country starts to take in too much water depriving the other countries of their share. Global warming is another aspect that can alter the flow of river making it unpredictable and causing floods. It can also affect the levels and saltiness of the lakes. Even after these challenges, there is brighter side to all of these concerns and there are signs of hope. People across the world are beginning to understand the working of freshwater ecosystem and are aware the extent of damage their actions have done or can do. So steps are being taken to rectify the damage and restore the freshwater ecosystems to their natural form. Like in the UK, growing of garden ponds has gained popularity. These ponds help in preserving the population of frogs and newts that were threatened by the destruction of pond habitats in the countryside. Today, hydropower provides much of the electricity needed for various purposes. The hydropower is although cheap and clean, but it has the capacity to disrupt the freshwater ecosystems drastically. The solution is not far away and there is one more source through which yet cheaper and cleaner power can be available. This process is called nuclear fusion which would produce far less pollution than today's nuclear power stations. In spite of these positive steps being taken, it is important to note that the other species of any biome make optimum use of its ecosystems without damaging it. We humans tend to over-exploit our surroundings in the name of development and economic growth. But if the human race is to survive along with the other species on planet Earth, then it is time to wake up, take notice and do something about it. Or else, the only planet in our solar system supporting life will become just like other planets. Baron and life.